All right, let's consult your favorite MP panel as they appear for the, what could be the last time before the summer recess, although there's some discussion about that. We'll still have tra trick questions for them at the end. For the Conservatives, the Class Act of Edmonton Finance Committee Chair James Rajat, the dignified Deputy Leader of the Dippers, NDP MP Megan Leslie of Halifax, and everyone's favorite Liberal in the pride of Cape Breton, MP Roger Kuzner. Oh, hey, that's a nice dramatic that's way to introduce yeah, it. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Before the end, you know. That's in my Flourish. next, that's in my so next campaign. Sure you, make sure you come back next <laughs> September. Let's talk about Trudeau, uh, Trudeau's bill. Uh, Roger, your fearless leader, fearlessly didn't show up to accept our invitation to appear. So you got to explain, why is he going the way he's going all of a sudden? What's, what's got him going on opening up government? Tell us what's in the bill. Uh, well, I, I, I think Justin Trudeau's a, a parliamentarian and a person who believes in the institutions of the country and uh, the institutions of government. And uh, uh, certainly with what he's done so far on, uh, on accountability, I think he's shown a lead there. He's probably done... Uh, more, uh, you know, I know the, the Conservatives sort of came uh, into town riding the, uh, the horse of accountability, but uh, there hasn't been a great deal done on it. The, but, you know, in actual, uh, for an ability for, to, to, for Canadians to see inside, to shed some light on, on what takes place um, with the, the parliamentarians, I think the accountability uh, measures were positive, and I know the Conservatives followed them, and, you know, so we, we've made some progress there. And, and this is just another, uh, uh, another move in that uh, direction. Yeah, I guess the bottom line here is he says everything's open unless it has to be closed, whereas he believes now everything's closed unless it has to be open. What's wrong with his attitude, James? Well, I mean, in terms of the attitude, obviously that's what we've been doing as a government, and I think we have to take a look at the legislation. I think he just tabled it today, so mm -hmm. we'll, we'll obviously give it due consideration. But as Roger mentioned, we introduced the Federal Accountability Act. We have initiatives like open government, uh, the Open Portal Initiative, which a lot of Canadians are using to access information. Mm -hmm. Every access to information request done by department is actually, you can read a little uh, summary on that particular department website in terms of the number of pages that have been done. So I encourage Canadians to access as much information as possible in terms of proactive disclosure of things like expenses. Uh, now the all three parties are on the same page in terms of that. So there is, in my view, a lot of information that's already readily publicly available. If there's more, there should be, and if there's more we should add to these open government initiatives, uh, we'll certainly look at that. Is Trudeau on the right track here, Megan? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, don't know. I haven't okay. read the bill. I mean, it doesn't exist yet, so I, I was looking forward to an answer from Roger when you asked, so what's in the bill? Well, okay, I'll tell you. Um, what the information watchdog, the privacy watchdog but would... See, uh... But that's those are just sort of... <laughs> promises that him behind a desk says, yeah, this is what we're going to do. And I mean, we've seen Trudeau on other issues where he came out full steam ahead during a press conference and says, <laughs> we're going to do Senate reform and, and we're getting rid of liberal senators. All that happened was the senators moved to the room beside them and then they switched the order of the words, Senate liberals, liberal Senate. So I'm <laughs> waiting to see if they're actually, if he's actually going to do anything on this. Uh, not super confident. I, I will say yay for Justin Trudeau for giving props to Pat Martin for some of the ideas that are in that bill. Uh, I'm glad that he he acknowledged Pat's work on this. So we'll see. I guess we'll see. Board of Internal Economy. <laughs> so I, I, I tried to talk out as long as I could yeah. to give you some time. Have some I'll, be water have some water. I'll be fine. Um, it's meeting in secret. The NDP tried to open it up. I will get through this. Don't worry. Um, is this a partisan game in your view? Or is there actually a procedural reason that they should do this? Well, <coughs> keep okay. talking while I get yeah, yeah. back. Yeah, <laughs> I think that there are legitimate questions raised about mailings generally. And what should the rules be for MPs across party lines? And what is partisan and what is not partisan? Those are legitimate questions to ask. So why aren't we asking them in some kind of transparent way? And why aren't we applying them equally across the board to all the parties? The Board of Internal Economy meets in secret. It's not an arm's length kind of independent uh, jury. It is MPs. So it is conservative and liberal and NDP MPs. So this is about the conservatives and the liberals rewriting the rules, making them retroactive, and, and ganging up to try and get some kind of weird dirt on us. But why, why won't they... Why won't, why won't they let this be public? Why won't they let it be transparent? We moved two motions. Okay. <laughs> well, but they're, they're at, I mean, the Procedure and House Affairs Committee had a public hearing. In fact, it was on Carrie Live on television, I believe. So in terms of the Board of Eternal Economy, I've never sat on that committee. I think Roger has and perhaps can shed some light on that. This has handled some of the tougher 
uh, issues in Parliament politically, and I guess they feel they need their, their meetings in camera. Um, with respect to the issue generally, I think we can all agree, and Canadians largely agree, that political party activities should be here, and your activities as a member of Parliament, which are taxpayer-funded, ought to be here. They ought to be separate. You ought not to be sharing offices. You ought to be sending out political literature during campaigns or by-elections with taxpayer funds. I think that's entirely legitimate that we separate those two. And if the NDP has transgressed that and has, in fact, blurred those lines, then they or should the repay the money. If any, if any political party has, they should repay the money. But in this case, it, it seems clear to me that the NDP has crossed that line in terms of party activities and the activities of members of parliament in their due course of being paid for by the general taxpayer. You sat on this board. Tell us about it. Uh, let, they let, gonna, let me, let me they're going to come out in a, <laughs> an hour and give us the verdict. Uh, Dorchester Penitentiary is filled with people that uh, don't agree with the verdicts of uh, the outcome of their cases. <laughs> oh, so, come on. You're telling oh, me that man. you can't have so, law or like the Supreme Court of Canada So, here? no, but what I'm saying is that the recommendations that were brought forward were it's not political at all. These uh, bureaucrats that bring the information yeah, forward and their recommendations, anybody that would see the House of Commons staff as being in any ways partisan, Roger, they are bluffing they themselves. They are no, making no, no. it up as they go along. The staff the House were of given staff, one party's the, mailers. They, are, they weren't given Liberal Party mailers. Because they there was given no concern around them. And you listen, had the mailers on last what week we have, and you posted them. What we have, people jig up. And, I, and, and, and again, as uh, James had said, I'd sat on that board. And there are some individuals in, in some parties that sort of do stuff that isn't that smart. And you're able to do with it. But this is obviously, uh, you know, this is a contrived effort to uh, utilize the resources of the House. But it seems more to, like a concerted campaign. That's, exactly. that's the issue there. Yeah, and I think, yeah, yeah. This, I, I'm, and further to Roger's point, like Audrey O'Brien, who's a clerk, is an outstanding public servant and in no way wants to target one party no. over another. And the same with the Speaker, Andrew Scheer, obviously relies on support from our, all political parties and does not in any way want to upset one party over another. So th they're acting, I think, res you know, hesitantly here. And I think we should l take their words very seriously. So. We're going to find out an hour, 6 o'clock. I'm having kittens here. Like, You're having kittens? <laughs> kittens. Well, go for it. You want to kill them both or what? Yeah. <laughs> More so than last week. I just, she you know. She was sleepy last week. Now she's wide awake and ready to go. <laughs> it is, it is, we do have. I've never heard that expression, having kittens. <laughs> <laughs> it means I'm pretty worked up. Okay, okay, okay. I, I'm, I'm not calling in a question, Audrey O'Brien. I think no. she's a magnificent clerk and, and fills her job beautifully. At, but when the House of Commons uh, administrative staff are only asked to look at one party's mailers, Don, you had different party mailers on the show last week showing, you know, uh, it was John Duncan saying, dun dun dun, Tom Mulcair is too risky. And then there was mine, because one of them is mine, it's got my name on it, my face on it, and it says, dear friends, don't you want to pass along a healthy environment to the next generation? So if we're going to do an analysis of the mail-out that has my name on it, then we need to do an analysis of all the mail-out. All right, we're winding up because we're going to lose you guys for the summer. Maybe. You might be back next Wednesday. I hope you are, but you maybe you're not. To do a show. I just want to quickly ask you two quick questions, and I know you're objecting to one of them already, but what's the best move by a party or a person in another party that's not of your party? I want to start with you, Roger. Um, this year, I'm talking about 2014. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thought, uh, you know, the Prime Minister, who's not known for his, uh, you know, he's more seen as a... Uh, very calculated uh, partisan and, and doesn't show a lot of grace uh, when it comes to all things political. Mm -hmm. I, I was really this impressed with the fact no, it is, it is. Oh uh, on Mandela's uh, funeral, he okay. invited Erwin Kotler along on the plane. He took the plane. He invited a number of uh, others along, mm -hmm. the, the uh, leaders as well. But uh, in particular, knowing the relationship that Erwin had had with uh, Nelson Mandela, and I thought that was gracious and prime ministerial and statesmanlike for the prime okay. minister. Megan? I, I actually was thinking about that exact example, and I'd, I'd expand it a little bit. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the Prime Minister, but that was a class <laughs> act. Uh, same with uh, making sure that the opposition leaders were at the funeral in Moncton for the fallen RCMP mm -hmm. officers. And then there seems to be a bit of a loosening on his part uh, in terms of, you know, I disagree with some of the private members' legislation coming out of the Conservative side, but you know what? It's allowed to be there. Yeah. And, yeah. and so I say thumbs up to that. Good call. 
want to play nice with these guys and go. I, I would agree with my two colleagues. <laughs> I, I, uh... Not of your party. <laughs> Look, I, I think there's been a number. I, I know you're going to, you know, not like this, but, you know, Elizabeth May's private members bill on Lyme disease, which was uh, unanimously adopted. I think Tom O'Care's continuing uh, performance during question period where he's simplifying questions and acting, asking very direct ones. I, I would have to say, and I'd compliment all the parties on this, but they were all so gracious uh, when uh, Jim Flaherty passed away. The remarks, both publicly and privately to us, was outstanding, and, I, uh, and we really appreciate that. That, that was, was very heartfelt and very yeah. nice, thank you. Uh, very quickly, I know what you're, you're all rejecting this question, but what's the worst move your party's done, uh, 2014, Megan? I think we made a pact in the green room. You're not going to discuss this? <laughs> this is a revolt. In the session, we should be talking about nice things. <sighs> All right. My we're, producer we're says we can here, end guys. on a positive. We're, we're too positive. I agree with Megan. We're too positive. Well, yeah, know, we're just yeah, we, uh, <laughs> we're the happy <laughs> bunch. Decisions are made within parties, eh? and you got to balance out all the issues. Some are. Uh, I've lost control of my MP panel here. All right, I will accept your verdict. We'll let you go. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll see you next week. If we don't have a great summer, it's been all great right, for us too. in 2014. Thanks, Doc.